So let's talk about selective color. There is a lot of power to selective color. So I'm going to do selective color and on my properties panel, it gives me access to all of the red pixels, yellow pixels, green pixels, cyan. So kind of similar to when, than when we did black and white, I have control over all of these, which is super cool. So let's say I want to change the color of just, this is all cyan color, kind of a bluish cyan color. So I'm going to go to my drop down menu and I'm going to select my cyan colors. And what I can do is I can change the color this way. So it's going to change all of those cyan colors in the photo to whatever I like. I can add more cyan. I can take it away. I can add magenta, take it away, add yellow, and then of course add black. So let's add cyan and you notice it makes it darker. We could take it away and it makes it kind of more, a little bit more white. We can add a little magenta in there to make it darker or take it away. We can add black to it or we could take it away. So we can kind of make it a little bit more rich by adding more cyan. Maybe add a little magenta and it's a lot darker, a lot more rich, isn't it? And same thing, you might have a little blue in there too. So. So we're on blues now and it's what I do it to, to know how it's going to have an effect to see which pixels are going to be blue and which ones are going to be selected. A lot of times I'll go to black and I can quickly kind of see what's going to be affected and it doesn't look like there's a whole lot that will be affected. So we know there's probably going to be a lot of whites and a lot of neutrals because of this background right here. This is probably more gray than it is white. So I'm going to choose neutrals, which will kind of be your grays. And I could do my black slider to see what's going to be affected. So it's going to be all of these pixels that are going to be affected. I can now add yellow or take away yellow. So I'm going to bring in another photo so I can show you this in a little more detail. I'm going to go ahead and find selective color. And with this photo, you have all these beautiful blue butterflies and kind of this blue forest background. So when we go to blues, it's going to have a huge effect on all these colors. So if I were to add cyan or, or add magenta, notice how it changes all of those colors that were previously blue. I can make them darker or I can make everything a lot lighter. So that just really affects it quite a bit. So let's say if I go to reds, there's not a lot of reds in this photo. If I were to go to black and make a quick change, I don't even think there's any red. So it doesn't really matter what I do because there's not a lot of red pixels in this photo. But there are blacks. There's blacks to most photos. So if I go to black and I add more black, it's going to darken the black and this will lighten the black. But you can also add undertones, like some warm undertones by adding magenta. See, so notice how it went from kind of kind of greenish, yellowish dirt, kind of added a little bit magenta to it. So super powerful, super selective. And I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that with another photo. One time for a client, I had to take a picture that was once summertime and I had to take it of a vineyard and I had to turn it into fall. Somehow I had to change the seasons. It seemed really impossible but using selective color and made it a lot easier. So I have this picture. It's obviously right in the middle of summer and we're going to make it look like it's from autumn by using selective color. So I, I'm in my adjustments panel. I'm doing selective color and I'm going to select all of the greens and the yellows and I'm going to be adding some more oranges and reds. So let's start with green and I'm going to be adding a little bit of magenta. We're adding kind of those, yellows, orange, browns, colors. And then we're going to go to yellows. And we're going to be reducing. So these are all everything that's kind of yellowish. We're going to be reducing the blue. And it's going to kind of bring out the yellows more. So you can almost see it turning into autumn slowly. I'm going to add a little bit of magenta. It's going to kind of add and make it a little more brown tones coming in. I'm going to do magenta and you can see it's kind of bringing out oranges. We can add yellows. 
and we even go to our reds and anything that was red we want to make it more red right we want to bring out reds so let's add a little magenta and there's not going to be a whole lot that changes with this one just a few you can kind of see on the right there change that to magenta And just like that, we were able to take something. I'm going to go ahead and toggle the selective color off and on. That was summertime, and we made it autumn by using selective color to emulate fall leaves. So after, before, after, before. So pretty cool stuff. So let's go back to ours. Let's see what we can do about editing those yellows. And let's also, it could be yellows, but there's also kind of reds. I know it's warm tones. Let's see what we could do with our red, how much, how much that's affected. So that's going to kind of be our table too. So we can uh, change our table, kind of subtract a little bit of yellow. It's all about experimentation, just like painting. You kind of see it, you know what's right. There's not going to be a right or wrong. Uh, just find out what looks good to you. Everyone has a different desire. Everyone has... Um, a different goal for, for how they want their photo to look stylistically. And there's one more we're going to go over in great detail, and that is gradient map. We're going to take an image and apply a gradient map to it. Uh, we're going to do that a little bit later. I'm going to edit a few other photos so we can go through this process one more time a lot quicker, not going through each one, but picking out ones we think we need to use for a photo. So I have a couple more photos in that downloadable folder that we're going to go through and do some super quick edits so we can practice some of these adjustment tools. So this is our after of our hourglass and we can go back to the before and sometimes you don't realize how many changes you make until you see the original photo. And there's one thing I wanted to do, and it's one thing I like to do, especially with photos that are right from a phone, is I like to add a little sharpness. It just really helps to add a nice quality to, to most photos that were just taken on an unprofessional camera. I love to sharpen images. So I'm gonna add a sharpness layer. So I wanna sharpen this hourglass. So I'm gonna select my layer, my smart object layer right here. I'm gonna go up to filter, it's got its own sharpen category. We're gonna go down to sharpen and we're gonna do just a quick, regular sharpen. So we click on sharpen, it's gonna sharpen the image for us. It added it as a smart layer and I can easily remove this sharpening if I want to. If I don't like it, I can just drag it into the trash can. So this is our after, we sharpened it, we added a couple of adjustments. We didn't use every single one, but we used quite a bit. So this is after and this is before. If I wanna check out before, I can go back into my history panel. You could scroll all the way up to the top. If you click on the very top, it reverts it right back to where we started. It goes all the way back to the beginning before we did all of these different activities. So you can click all the way back at the bottom to load where we were, go all the way back up the top to see. So that's before. As you can see, it's a lot darker it doesn't have the high saturation. It doesn't have the bright, vivid colors. You scroll all the way down here, you'll notice that we kind of added some really vibrant colors. It almost looks like a digital painting um, instead of just a picture um, that I took in my house. So there's the power of editing right there. Another thing you could do, that's just your history panel. Another thing you could do is you could take, you can group all these. So all these adjustments that we made, I'm just gonna click once at the top hold down shift, click at the bottom. I can just quickly select all of my adjustments. I can throw them into a folder. So this helps when you have multiple photos you're working with in the same document. It's nice to just create a folder. So it's gonna click on the folder. It's gonna take everything that's highlighted and it's gonna group it into a folder for me. And I can title this adjustments. And I can easily toggle off the entire folder so I can have before and after. That is just a really quick way to kind of see your before and your after effects. So let's go ahead and work on our other photos really quickly and I'll see you in the next lesson.